The first official world champions of football were Uruguay at the 1930 World Cup. But all the way back in 1909, West Auckland, a team made up of coal miners, took part in a competition called the Thomas Lipton Trophy, winners of whom were considered champions of the world. A number of high-profile clubs would take part, but it would be the side from County Durham that won this tournament not once, but twice. This is the story of West Auckland, the miners who conquered the world. The Sir Thomas Lipton Trophy was founded by Thomas Lipton, a self-made businessman who founded Lipton Tea, as well as a range of grocery stores. A philanthropist and sports enthusiast, he founded the football tournament that bared his name, in hopes of creating a competition that would bring the best footballing sides of the world together. Italy, Germany and Switzerland duly obliged, but the English FA declined to send one of their top teams. As a result, England will be represented by a team from the lower leagues in West Auckland, and the exact reason why they were selected has been lost in time. Some think Lipton left a note for his secretary that said get WA, that meant Woolwich Arsenal, but had been misinterpreted to them getting West Auckland instead. West Auckland were made up of coal miners, many of whom had never left County Durham before. Nonetheless, they would make the long journey to Turin, where they would be representing English football. Many of their players would pay for the trip out of their own pockets. The tournament would be made up of four teams in West Auckland of England, Sport Fronde Stuttgart of Germany, Winterthur of Switzerland and Torino of Italy. West Auckland justified their long journey in the semi-final, defeating Sport and Freud Stuttgart by two goals to nil. They were one game away from winning the trophy. The men from the northeast faced Winterthur in the final and there were no issues for them there either. West Auckland defeated the Swiss side by two goals to nil and won the Thomas Lipton Trophy. As a result, many see them today as the first ever world champions. Two years later, the tournament would take place in Turin again. This time, the tournament was formed up of West Auckland, Torino, Juventus and FC Zurich. The sides forming this tournament with West Auckland would all go on to be champions of their country many times, but they would be humbled by a side made up of 11 colliers. West Auckland defeated Torino 2-0 in the semi-final, and any doubts that may have been there about them retaining the trophy were laughed away, when they thrashed Juventus by an astonishing 6 goals to 1. They retained their trophy, and West Auckland had upset the odds to be unofficial world champions once again. Unfortunately, West Auckland would fall away after this victory, and had to sell the Thomas Lipton trophy to a local landlady due to financial issues. The club would even briefly fold for a period in the 1910s. They bought the Thomas Lipton trophy back in the 1960s, and whilst it was stolen in 1994, an exact replica can be found today in the Auckland Working Men's Club. West Auckland may never have reached the heights they did in 1909 and 1911 again, while some of the sides they defeated have gone on to be infinitely more successful, but the wonders they worked in Turin can never be taken away from them. The West Auckland badge pays tribute to those two cup victories, and their success also had influence on the continents, with members of the West Auckland side, Miles Barron and Jack Greenwell, both going on to manage Barcelona with Greenwell becoming Barcelona's longest-serving manager and winning two Copa del Reyes at the club. West Auckland may not be a household name in the footballing world, but their incredible achievement deserves a lot more credit, as they defeated clubs who had gone to be giants in their respective homelands. And whilst England were world champions in 1966, around 50 years before, West Auckland were world champions twice. Mm -hmm. 